Thank you, Jose. ETA.
Calling case two, three, five, seven, one, five, five, people of State Michigan versus Jameer Kale Miller. Defendant is charged with count one homicide, murder, first degree premeditated, count two felony murder, count three carjack, count four robbery armed, count five weapons firearms, possession by a felon, count six felony firearms, second defense notice. Count seven. Get out of the room prior to the workplace. Ready? All right. Back on the record on people versus Miller. Uh, I'm sorry, I did attend it. You're going to be Left upper chest, 
situated three and a half inches below the top of the head and one and three quarter inches to the left of the front midline. The trajectory of the gunshot wound is from front to back, slightly left to right and downwards. Gunshot wound B. There is a gunshot wound of entrance in the right upper mid back area situated 14 and a half inches below the top of the head and seven and a half to the right of the back midline. <clears throat> the trajectory of this gunshot wound is from front to back, slightly right to left and downwards. Gunshot wound C. There is a gunshot wound of entrance on the right outer mid back area situated 17 and a half inches below the top of the head and eight and a quarter inches to the right of the back midline. The trajectory of this gunshot wound is from back to front, slightly right to left B downwards. Gunshot wound D. There is a gunshot wound of entrance in the right side of the mid back area situated 18 inches below the top of the head and seven and a half inches to the right of the back midline. The trajectory of the gunshot wound is from back to front, slightly right to left and downward. Gunshot wound E. There's a perforating gunshot wound to the distal left forearm with an entrance on the outer radial aspect of the forearm 27 inches below the top of the head and the exit on the inner aspect of the ulnar side of the left forearm at the same level. Gunshot wound F. There is a grazing wound of the ulnar aspect of the right wrist situated 31 inches below the top of the head. This wound can be aligned with the wound of the front of the right thigh, which is right below. Gunshot wound G. There is a through and through gunshot wound to the right thigh with an entrance in the inner aspect of the mid thigh, 38 inches below the top of the head. The trajectory of this wound is from front to back and slightly upward. No projectile was recovered. Other trauma. The skin of the upper parts of both products shows post mortem brush burns. I'm going to be 10 opinion. This 29 year old black female, Patrice Wilson, died of multiple gunshot wounds, most sustained from contact range of a fire. There was no evidence of a pre existing disease. There was evidence of the body being dragged after death over a rough surface, accounting for the post mortem brush burns on, over the buttocks. In consideration of the circumstances surrounding this death, the result of this post mortem examination and the results of the toxicology analysis, the manner of death is homicide. All right. Why are you going out on the change years ago? We are back on the record on people versus Miller. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're an article department with the goal of the state police department. Any objection to the first time? Now, for our Court will we'll receive people's proposed exhibits two and three as evidence of people's exhibits two and three. Thank you, Your Honor. And briefly, uh, with regards to people's exhibit two, authored by uh, Ryan Green, R I O N N E Green, with an E at the end. Um, people notate for the record um, with regards on page three, with regards to. MD 2314876A jacket that this jacket tests positive for phenyl phenylethylene, indicating a possible presence of blood. Also, with regards to MD 2314876E pants, again, testing positive with phenylethylene. With regards to people's exhibit three, the <clears throat> report is authored by Jennifer Jones of the Michigan State Police Biology Unit as a forensic scientist. 
on page uh, three, um, number seven, interpretation of item MD 231487-5EB, steering wheel swabs, was performed assuming the DNA profile originated from three individuals, at least one of which gen genetically types is a male. In this particular analysis, the verbal scale uh, for the first hypothesis is this analysis provides very strong support for Patrice Wilson as contributor to the steering wheel swaps. For the second hypothesis, this analysis provides very strong support that Jameer Miller is a contributor to the steering wheel swaps. With regards to uh, paragraph eight in this report, interpretation of item N2231487 6A and D, jacket stain swaps, was performed assuming that the DNA profile originated from two individuals, at least one of which genetically types as a male. Under hypothesis one, this analysis provides very strong support for Trace Wilson as a contributor to the jacket stain swabs. Under hypothesis two, this analysis provides moderate support that Junior and the contributor to the jacket stain swabs. And <clears throat> finally, interpretation of item MD 2314876A2D jacket swabs was performed assuming that the N DNA profile originated from four individuals, at least one of which genetically type is male. First hypothesis verbal scale provides very strong support to Trace Wilson as a contributor to the jacket swaps. The second <clears throat> hypothesis indicates with a verbal scale that the analysis provides very strong support that Janine Miller is a contributor to the jacket swaps. Yeah, I would like to call uh, Aisha. Before you do that, we have a stipulation as to identification Yeah, please step forward, give your name and spelling to the young lady seated there. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Please have a seat in this box right next to me. Just pull that door open. Speaking to the microphone that beats you to your left, nice and loud, of course, okay? Okay, again, you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Could you please state your name for the record? I'm sure. And Ms. Williams, what's your occupation? Nurse. Please speak into the microphone for me. I'm a nurse. Where do you work as a nurse? Detroit Receiving. And did you work as a nurse uh, at Detroit Receiving Hospital on May of 13th? Of 2021. Yes. Um, so on that day, what shift did you work? I work 7 8 to 7 p.m. You say 7 8 to 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right. So um, that morning, how did you get to the hospital? I was 12. All right. And um, where did you drive when you got to the hospital? I drove up and I ran up one. You say up to you? Yes. You say up to you, uh, what are you referring to? The entrance to the train scene at hospital is like a whole street. All right. When you uh, go up to you, uh, where do you track? So you got to go past. Uh, University Health Center to come around to the main entrance to Detroit Receiving. So you pull off the stand. Were you driving the car that morning? No. Okay, who was driving the car? I was. Okay. So when you um 
uh, are pulling out to the trigger to me that morning about what time? Probably between 7 30, 7 40 ish. Um, and when you pull up, where exactly is this car? So we enter from San Antonio and start going to our university from San and then we come around because you have to come back around to get to the right side of the parking lot. And it's over from like if you pass the subway, you pass like the ballet cars and all of that stuff to get to the main entrance of the city. All right. Um, while you're doing that, you notice something. Yes. What did you notice? There was a um, gentleman standing there um, at like the curb as if he was across the street. And um, he was just standing there, and yeah, on a wig, a blonde wig, um, glasses, and gray wig. Now, tell me uh, about the blonde wig. The blonde wig was like a vibe, like a vibe or a kind of like gray. So, so um, about how long down does the blonde wig go? It's like at least to show them. So, <clears throat> What drew your attention to that individual exactly? Well, just because we were driving, trying to go around the youth, and it looked like he was going to cross the street almost. So I'm you know, just standing there with the wig and some glasses on. Uh, so um, could you make out any distinguishing characteristics of that individual? No, not really. Well, could you tell us his bracelet? He was asking there. And if you know about how tall was he? Compared to me, I would say about five, eight, five, eight. How tall are you next? Um, so, as you pull around, do you continue to see this person? Yes. Okay. Where does this person go? He was just standing, like I said, like at the curb, as if he was on the um, Across the street, but right as he was standing there, everyone else was starting to leave out the building from getting off the way. So, um, what happens at that point? I see a young lady leave as she went to get into her vehicle, and he was at the back of that vehicle. Tell me, do uh, you recall what type of vehicle was that? It was a black one. And did you see this young lady get into the car? Yes. Okay, what seat did you get into the car? She had to keep right the seat. Um, at that point, did you see anything else? When she got into her car, she hit her lock, threw her bag in the car, and got in the front seat. She jumped in the back seat of her passenger side. Then, you say she threw her bag in the car. Oh, where did you see the front? She threw her bag because she had a book bag, like she was getting off the work. So she hit her lock and threw the bag in the car when she opened the door and then. Um, was she still in the driver's door when she did that? Yes. Did she open any other doors in the car other than the driver's door? So um, you indicated that you saw this person in the wig get in the back of the car? Yes. What happened next? Then when he once she got in, because it happened really rapidly and fast, we seen like a big body thrust like he pulled her to the back of the car. And then from there you were her screen, and from there you were working with gunshots. Now, um, Ms. Williams, while you were um, pulling out to the trigger, are observing this. Where are you specifically located? And at that point, he was right directly in back of her car. Oh, what did you do? At first, I was kind of shocked. I started yelling for my lawyer to pull on to take me to the front of the building. Right. Um, and so, uh, about how long did this uh, sequence of events last from when uh, the young lady got into the car to when you heard the gunshots? Maybe three minutes. And so, what do you do after that three minutes? I put it front of the main entrance of the hospital to try to go to a security the last thing. Uh, now, well, you are outside the building. Um, you 
but tend to interfere or intervene, excuse me, at all with what was going on in the right now. So, you indicated you heard uh, several gunshots. Um, when you um, heard the gunshots, you uh, were you indicated earlier in the first one? In my car. How did you see the, the Lincoln go away? Yes. Where did it go? After I pulled, so after my door pulled into the front of the building, I got out to go to the security. What had happened? You just made me leave this to walk on the lady in the store right there. So I pulled off the front. Okay. Um, and Cross the fence. Good morning, Ms. Williams. Good morning. I'm going to ask you some questions, and then anytime I ask you a question that you don't understand, please let me know if you don't understand the question. Um, take me back to this particular day. We did read that this would have been a very startling event. Yes. When you're employed with the DMC, is that right? Yes. So you're aware that this entire area is under surveillance. Supposed to be before you came to testify today, you didn't do anything. No, who have you spoken with about it? Okay? No, you're not spoken with the prosecutor. One time, she just basically told me about the prosecutor's incident. But when I asked you, you spoken with me. It's to me, it's more. It's Ms. Dornan, Detective Lane. Who have you talked to? About? Just one time, the prosecutor left. Uh, not ever talked to Detective Blaine's office. He dropped my subpoena off. Any colleagues at work? My nurse and supervisor down there. And you also talked to some police officers on this particular day. Is that right? Yes. And at some point, you actually give a state. Is that right? Yes. So you say you come with Officer Hand Crime on to the new where the subway is. That's a tinted, well, that's like burgundy. Plastic walls. That's the end that you can go into waste to go out of. No. I was going into the main entrance of the hospital. In the front. Yes. So you go down back past this particular area though. Come back to the front. Is that right? You have to drive in on your right side to get to your left side of the of the complex to get into the meeting. And we agreed on the right side would be the underground parking lot, is that right? On the left side. And the right side is where the hospital is. The, the underground side. parking lot is in the middle. But it's the hospital on the right side. The hospital from the entrance way will be on the left. So if you come out from St. Antoine, come around this is you. The hospital is not sitting on the right. The hospital then will be on my right. But as you enter St. Antoine on the view, it will be on your left. Okay. So you come into this particular uh, location, you're being driven by your daughter. Right. Yes. And he said, um, they told us it's somewhere between 7 30 and 7 40. Yes. Is that right? And uh, were you having a conversation with your daughter or doing anything in particular? No, not really. No. Okay. And you say you were you, but the vehicle you were in, man, was it a blue vehicle? Yes. And you were the passenger, is that right? Yes. Waiting to get dropped off, is that right? Yes. And when um, you say today, you just noticed someone that you thought could have been crossing the street, is that right? Yes. 
if the person actually crosses you. No. When you saw this particular person um, that today you say appears to be crossing the street, you didn't think anything about that, did you? No. And then you continue to, I want to know exactly what the person is in relationship to the vehicle when you say saw this person kind of look at looking as if the person was going to cross the street. From the way that the view is made, you have like a curve because there's really nowhere to be. So you had a curve and then you have us crossing. You had that person standing here. So they were standing here, like on my side of the passenger car. And and right here at park was the vehicle that he jumped into. Okay. So the person is standing next to the vehicle. Okay. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And did your daughter stop? The vehicle that you were in. Yes, she did. Okay. Did the person ever go across? No. Did your daughter then continue to draw the path? No. Okay, why not? Because we've seen him jump in the back seat of the car. Okay. So let me ask you about that. You said you saw this uh, individual, Miss Wilson. Did you see her walking toward the vehicle? She did. Yeah, came up to her car and got in the car. You didn't know her before, right? No. Other than to say, just hide and buy, right? I never spoke to her. I never even had a conversation with her. Uh, you remember talking to a police officer and telling them that you just knew her up from like a high by basis? You know, okay. You were interviewed by a police officer on this particular day, is that right? Yes. And you know this police officer was writing down what he said, is that right? Yes. Okay. And you don't have any reason to think they would say something you didn't say, do you? I mean, you know, I've never met the police. Okay. Never knew her. Okay, so on this particular day, you say you, you stopped behind the vehicle because you say you saw her come to the vehicle, open the door, and throw up her bag. Is that right? Yes. So can you tell me, or at this point, is your vehicle directly behind the vehicle or passing for the, the street or back for the hospital? My, our car was positioned at this point right now. Okay. And you stop. Yes. Okay. And you said all this takes place in a matter of about three, three minutes, right? Yes. Are you sure it's about three minutes? Or yes. About three minutes. Okay. And you said this, you saw her door unlocked, is that right? Her door was locked. Yes. Okay. Did you see her do something to unlock the door? Yeah. Okay. And when she hit her key, you don't know if all the doors open or not, do you? No. And then you said she, you saw this person throw up something in the back seat. Is that right? No, she threw her bag into like the passenger seat of the front of the car. The passenger seat of the front of the car? Yes. Hey, do you remember giving a statement to a police officer, last name Edwards, or? May 13, 2023, 11 51 in the morning. Yes. Uh, did you review the statement that you gave? No. Did you did you sign the statement? Yes. Did you read the statement before you signed it? They can't hold it out and just but but did you ever Read the statement itself. Let me ask you. Do uh, you remember a question? Had you respond as I was coming in the drive to be dropped off at work? I noticed a guy wearing a brown wig, brown hat, and glasses sitting on the side of a black SUV. I didn't think about it at the time, but then I noticed another nurse walk up to the same SUV on the other side from the guy. Remember? Bring that thing. Yes. As, I, as she walked up to the SUV, she threw her bag in the back. Then she hopped in. You remember saying that? I didn't say that. But as she got in, he got in the back. 
I stopped and saw a thrust like it looks like sorry, does that look like no? Or does that look like kind of too? No grab her. He because this is not you didn't write this out. He grabbed her. Do you remember saying that? He grabbed her. Yes, and grabbed her from the front of the car. Okay. After a minute, I heard four gunshots inside the car. And that's when I ran off. Is that right? No, no, no. We pulled up the And I got security. And when I came back, the car was gone. But her shoe was still in. So, but you remember signing the statement, is that right? Yes. But today you say the statement is incorrect. If they said I ran, yes, that's incorrect. Now, when you were talking to this particular person, did you notice the person having on a body you? No. Um, this William, when you spoke with an officer on this particular day, did you tell an officer that you saw this person uh, putting someone in the back seat? No, I told them when we pulled her from the front seat from our back. You remember telling an officer that you continued to slow roll? No. And her report? This is it. You remember telling the officer that you continued to roll, slow roll and her report got sack. And that's when you tell your daughter to go on. No. Do you remember telling an officer that you heard some heated exchange? And you spoke with, you remember speaking with two different officers on this particular morning? I never spoke to a police officer. It was the security team from Detroit to the hospital, and it was Wayne State Security from the school. <laughs> They're police officers. They're security officers. So you do remember speaking to them. Is that right? Those so people. Okay. Now, you couldn't describe a person other than just. Clothing, is that right? Clothing, you have to not leave in those events. But no, not by face, right? No. You wouldn't be able to identify the person at all, right? No. And on this particular day, you said this person had on, you remember saying in a statement, the person had on black? Yeah, I remember. A black jacket. Yeah, on the hoodie. Do you remember? Being asked the question, can you describe the male? Do you remember giving his answer? He had on a black jacket. I don't remember fully, but he was wearing that brown wig, that brown hat, and glasses. I never said anything on the head. When you were being interviewed by Officer Edwards, uh, you remember where you were being interviewed at then? Yes. Where was it? I don't know if his view was Evans, but when the security team got out there, it was where her shoes left left in the parking lot where her view was. And on this particular day, as you were being interviewed, you clearly understood the question that was being asked, right? Yes. And you gave the answer that you wanted to give, right? Yes. Can you read your I just have one question for you, ma'am. Do you recall how the animated was with the nurse? Yeah, the nurse was one of the questions. Any questions based on my question? I know you are. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Let me pause for a second. Ms. Gabe Robinson. Yes, sir. Are you ready? I am ready to proceed. Can you please excuse my, my picture for the more battery life is taken when I turn the video on?
Good morning, Your Honor. Shelley Drain for the People, P number 60249. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Gaten Robinson on behalf of Mr. Sorry. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Attorney Gaten Robinson on behalf of Mr. Miles. Your Honor, is right. Mr. Miles in the courtroom? No, he's not. Okay. I have not heard from Mr. Miles from the letter that I sent to him when you gave me additional time to reach out to him last week. Okay. And I have no other choice but to issue a case for Mr. Miles. We both can find a safe coupon at 25,000 cash. Okay. Your Honor, I will try to send the private investigator out and if they are able to locate him, then I will uh, try to walk him in or zoom him in. As long as it's within two weeks, otherwise you have to go to the DDC. Yeah, he's on tether too. Oh, he's on the tether. I'm sorry, Your Honor. As long as that's what? Within two weeks. Okay. But I understand he's on the tether, so he should be really easy to locate. Okay. Thank you. I'll I'll reach out to the tether people as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I did that. Okay, hey, back on the Good morning, ma'am. Please step forward. Give your name and spell it to the young lady seated there. Please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, yeah. Thank you. Please have a seat with this box next to you. Okay. Nice and loud. Use your outside voice for this. Speak into that microphone. Make your name ready. Thank you, Could you please see your name for the record? Shelby Kennedy. Now, uh, Ms. Kennedy, um, do you know uh, Junior Miller? Um, yes. How, how long have you known Junior Miller? Uh, I know him for a few years, long time. I was a kid. About how old were you when you first knew Junior Miller? Okay. And how old are you today? Thank you. How did you know the Trees Wilson? We went to high school together. Could you describe the relationship you had with the We were close years, everything, pretty much. Um, it was a good friendship. Um, now, um, were you aware of a relationship between uh, the defendant and Ms. Wilson? Yes. Okay, what was that relationship? Um, 
different in that relationship. Uh, and how would you describe the relationship? Um, from my understanding, stressful, sometimes good, mostly bad. About how long uh, were they in a relationship? You know? mm -hmm. About a year, year, two years. And if you are aware, how did they come to be in a relationship? Um, I posted her on my Instagram story uh, while she was over my house, and he wrote me under her picture and then wrote her. On our Instagram. So they got together from her Instagram. Yeah. Um, so are you aware, aware excuse me, of their relationship status on 13 May 2023? No. When was the last time you had talked to Miss Wilson prior to uh, you know 13? Um, it was April 26th, it was two days after my birthday. Um, and she recalled the last time you had seen. Wow. Would it be fair to say that you grew up around uh, defendants? Yeah, pretty much. Now, uh, Miss. Kennedy, uh, the police in this particular, the reason you're here today, the police uh, interviewed you, right? right? Yeah. Um, and during one of your interviews with the police, did they show you a photograph? Yeah. Yeah, Coach Yeah. Ms. Kennedy, can you tell me this was exhibit four plus this? The picture of Jimmy. Um, and <laughs> can you take it from me? Uh, that's a two page document, correct? Mm -hmm. Picture of Jameer, and then look on the second page. Okay. Look on the second page. Picture. And did you uh, answer that question with the police? Yes. And did you uh, indicate who it was? I did. And you indicated it was Jameer. And you signed a date of that uh, paper as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, what was the I guess.
that you want to talk about, it caused her to stop talking to you? No, it caused me to fall back a little bit. Okay, so that's some, so from the 26 forward, you didn't talk to her anymore. Is that right? We did. It just wasn't every day or all day like we used to. Okay. So you continue to remain as close to the relationship with her. Is that right? Yes. And uh, you've been at functions where she has been with Mr. Miller. Is that right? Why don't you? Yeah. Christmas party the year before the point two. Is that right? No. You weren't there? No. Okay. You've been in their company the same as we this party. Is that right? Um, when I was at the black party that she probably referring to, she was at my she came to my aunt's house and sat on the porch with me. So I wasn't around them too. Have you ever been in their company as a couple? No. You've never gone out with them. No. So then you don't really know how the relationship was. Well, I know what she told me. Okay. Did you did you witness anything yourself? Oh. Yeah. So you were never with them out at some kind of function. Never saw a hit or anything like that, right? Huh? You never saw a hit like or anything like that. Yeah, in the video. In, in some video. Yeah. And that was, do you know what precipitated any of that? Um, I don't know. I just know that he threatened me in the video and I feel that. Okay. Did you make any police report about anything like that? No. Okay. And you had gotten along with him all this time, right? What's the last time you talked to this No. My Instagram post to and so you just really communicated by Instagram? Yeah. We didn't know each other and on talking terms. No. Okay. So you just know him from the neighborhood. You weren't friends at all. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So first question. Can you read her? No. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Please step forward, give your name and spell to the young lady seated there. Please raise your right hand. Can you swear or affirm and tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you got? Thank you. And please have a seat with the sponsor right in front next to me. The voice of my salon speaking to that microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Livingston, uh, can you tell us who Richard Wilson? First, let's get your name for the oh, word. Sorry. Uh, My name is Ralph Livingston. Okay. And Ms. Livingston, uh, tell us uh, who was Latrice Wilson? Latrice Wilson is my daughter. Now, Ms. Livingston, uh, can you tell us uh, back on uh, May 13th, 2023, uh, where were you that morning? I was at work at Hartford Hospital. Um, and while you were at work at Hartford Hospital, uh, did you, uh, what time? I clocked in at six o'clock. I spoke with my daughter. She works the midnight shift. We talked. She said she was going to get off work and she was going to go work out and go to our next assignment. Um, uh, Ms. Livingston, uh, about what time did you talk to? Uh, I talked to Patrice about 6.40. Can't you talk to your uh, daughter? Um, what did you do? Um, I proceeded back to work about five minutes later. I get a phone call. Um, and when you see that phone call, 
there was a young man on the on the other end. Um, and did he provide you with some information? He provided me that he was talking to my daughter, and he heard her screaming and hollering like she needed help. What did you do based on that phone call you had with the young man? I uh, proceeded to tell my supervisor that I was on my way uh, to Harper Hospital at the front desk so they can come and pick me up to take me to receive him. Um, so did you do that, go to the front desk at Harper and then go to receive him? Yes, I did. About how long after um, you uh, received that phone call from him again, did you end up at receiving him? Uh, it only took them about five minutes to ride me over there to receive him. When I arrived to receive, uh, and uh, when you go to receiving, do you make contact with you? When I go to receiving, I am um, proceeded downstairs to where the security uh, office is, and there is cameras. Okay. Now, Miss um, Livingston, while you were uh, at receiving, um, you. I told them what I heard on someone told me on the phone um, while I'm sitting down at receiving the, in the security office. There are uh, CEOs down there. There's uh, uh, security uh, from the DMCs down there, and there are cameras going on. Right. So, um, Ms. Livingston, um, <clears throat> did you? Uh, at that point, uh, what were you advised of by the security officers? Well, when I got there, the security officers, it looked like they were trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's the first thing. Uh, I observed the cameras. Okay. So I see what's going on. And you're saying you observed the cameras because they were playing what had happened? They are replaying the cameras. Um, now, tell me what type of car did Patrice have? Patrice drove a Lincoln. And what color was it? It was black. Um, and when you say a Lincoln, what type of car is it? Is it a car, an SUV? Um, I would call it an SUV. You know what uh, the, the badge of it is? Uh, I think it was a 2.0 or something like that. And um, when... Um, Or at the security office. Yes, I do. Okay. Do you know who you're calling? Yes, I do. 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 He's right over there and he's in running. How do you know he's in the Uh, He gave my daughter. How long did he give your daughter? About two to three years. Okay. And um, during the time that he dated your daughter, um, <clears throat> did there come a point when they broke up? Yeah. When was that? Um, A couple of months ago before May. Okay, so a couple months before me. Yeah. All right. Um, and when you went to the hospital, did you mention your killer? When I seen security cameras, and there was a young man standing out there with a wig, a mask, a hat with some cardiac glasses on. I knew exactly who he was. His face, I can I can see it. I can see his face. I can see the glasses. I, I, I know what kind of glasses he wears. Uh, so does the defendant uh, wear cardiac glasses regularly? Oh when I when, he, when I see him, he has his glasses on. Now um, 
Were you aware of any uh, phone numbers on that day that were associated with this number? What's that? Where say that? Okay, did, did you know any phone numbers that day that were associated with this number? No. And did you know him at all on uh, any sort of Instagram or Facebook or anything? No. Um, uh, later on, did you go to medical examiner's offices? Yes, I did. I had to identify my daughter. Patrice is not here today. Good morning, Good morning. First of all, let me extend my sincere because I'm a mother too. I'm going to ask you some questions at any time you want to send a question to stop. Ask me to be afraid, okay? Yes, ma'am. And you were familiar with Mr. Miller because of the relationship with Ms. Wilson. Could right? you repeat that again? You're, you're familiar with Mr. Miller because of his relationship with your daughter. He daughter, he dated my daughter. And he, according to you, he dated, they said they dated for two or three years? Yeah, they were there about two or three years. When you gave it, and I know when you gave your statement, you probably still got upset. Is that right? You did, you do remember giving a statement to the police, is that right? If I gave a statement, yes. And uh, you, were, you remember being asked questions on 5-13-2023? About 11 35 in the a.m. Okay. So, do I remember? Yes, ma'am. I'm asking you, do you remember? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so, when you were asked questions, you understood the questions that were being asked. I'm going to try to move it. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. When you were asked questions, you understood the questions being asked, and then you gave the answers you wanted to give, right? Yes, ma'am. Now, um, you also worked at the DMC at the same time your daughter worked at the DMC, is that right? Yes, I worked at DMC, I worked at Harper, and she works at Detroit DC. Okay, so would you speak with her pretty much daily? Daily we do. Okay. And you, at that time when you were interviewed, you weren't aware of her having any issues with anyone, is that right? Um, there was a couple of issues with them in their relationship okay. that I was aware of. Uh, you remember being asked, do you know if she was having an issue with anyone and giving the answer no? Yes. Yes to the question. Yeah, there was yes. an issue that, that she had issue with someone. So did you recall educating or giving the answer no? No, I don't recall that. Can I post a witness, Your Honor? Okay.
Um, there were signs. Uh, they were talk about her license plate being getting taken off her vehicle at work. Um, I asked her, did she report it? Yes, she did. Okay. Wait, do you remember being asked a question? Any history of violence? Do you remember giving this answer? Not that I know of. I said, it's violent. Violence is someone that's hitting you. When your like, incidents are different from violence. Okay, well, when you were asked a question, yeah. You were not prevented from elaborating by a police officer, were you? No, you, you don't get violence, right? Okay. But if you were not prevented from elaborating on any answer that you wanted to get, were you? Well, he asked about violence. He didn't ask about incidents. Did you volunteer any of, any of the information that you gave us today? Did I do what? Volunteer any of the information that you gave us today? Did I volunteer them? Volunteer to work with the officer that you were speaking with. You volunteer any of the information? No, I didn't give him no other information up than what he asked. Okay. Uh, you've never been to my client's home, is that right? No. When you were asked by the officer, did your daughter talk to you about her relationship? Did you indicate no? Relationship? Yes, ma'am. No, she didn't talk to me personally about what she felt about the young man, but when things happened, that she indicated some things to me. Okay. So, with the answer to the question that you were asked, question, did your daughter talk to you about their relationship? And your answer was no. That's right. Thank you, Daniel, for the question. Can you redirect? Thank you. 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 Please give your name and spell it to the court. court. You crazy right here. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Good response. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you make the name of the record? Officer Julian T. Officer T. um, what is your current occupation? Uh, police officer patrol. And what? Uh, what? Wayne State University Police Department. Uh, officer T. on May 13th of 2013, you received a dispatch to go to Detroit Receiving Hospital at 4201 St. Antoine City of Detroit. Yes. And about what time? 7.50. 7.50. And that's in the morning? Yes, ma'am. When you uh, arrived at Detroit Receiving Hospital, what did you do first? I first uh, made the location of the north side of 4201 St. Antoine and uh, made contact with a witness. Uh, who was that individual? If I recall it correctly, Ms. Williams. Oh, and Officer, can I, uh, do you have your police report with you up there today? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, if you need to refer to it, just let us know. We'll let you do that. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so you met with uh, Ms. Williams, correct? Yes, ma'am. Where did you meet with her? On the north side of uh, 42 Orleans, St. Antoine. Inside or outside? Outside. 
Uh, after you met with Ms. Williams, what did you do? Once I met with Ms. Williams, uh, I gathered some information of, uh, she stated that, would you like to tell you what she stated? And you gathered information from Ms. Williams? Correct. Okay. Um, what did you do with that information? I uh, relayed that information to my dispatcher, as well as other units on scene. Okay, at this point, how many other units are on scene? At least another, if I recall this correctly, three other units. Um, what did you do after scene? I went to the DMC command center. And where is that? That is inside of a Detroit receiving hospital in the basement area. Once you go to the command center, who do you go there? Again? When you go to the command center, who do you go there? Uh, I met with uh, the command center uh, staff. Uh, I got their names. Okay, but when looking at the report, the front of reflection is the names of the individuals in the proceedings? I don't recall the names. What's looking at your report helps with the front reflection about those names? Uh, it was uh, two security guards. So we're good. Okay. Would looking at your report though help you figure out what oh, those names are? Absolutely. I'm okay, sorry. just take a minute and look at it and then uh, let us know when you're done. Yes, Sergeant Benjamin Cayora and Sergeant Larry Brennan. So you met with those two individuals uh, at a command center and security officer officer for receiving, right? Yes, ma'am. When you're there, what do you do if the super uh, I made notifications to notification and control. Okay. I uh, informed my lieutenant about the situation. I made contact with a uh, another witness uh, or another person who knew the victim. Okay. I uh, notified the police department. I called. Uh, Tell me, why, why did you know about Inkster Police Department? I, once we gathered more information, I wanted the Inkster Police Department to go to the victim's house to see just in case that the individual who just uh, took the vehicle from the location might have gone to the victim's residence. Okay. Um, now, um, What uh, else did you do while you were at uh, the receiving hospital in the street? I'm sorry. What else did you do while you were at the hospital? I contacted the Garden City Police Department. And why did you do that? At one point of time, the phone was pinging in an area of uh, Helen and Forey. Okay. This area was outside of Inkster, and therefore I contacted the Garden City. You said the phone was pinging. What phone? Uh, the victim's phone. And you had received a phone number from somebody for the victim? The mother of the victim stated that her phone was pinging at this gas station. I'm sorry, at this uh, car wash uh, located at Helen uh, for it, called okay. Lacey's Car Wash. Uh, so you said Garden City, absolutely. Correct. All right. um, at some point, um, after all that happened, um, the Detroit police started to get involved in the situation. Yes, ma'am. Notifications were made to Detroit Police Department, homicides, missing persons, commercial auto theft unit. When this first started, uh, you believe it was just an incident, correct? Yeah, I can't tell that what you believe. I'll be free. When this first started, what type of uh, call was it? Uh, it was an abduction, kidnapping. Upon further investigation, upon further making contact with the initial witness, uh, she stated that four shots were fired. Let me, okay, let me try to understand. Um, let me ask you a different question. Based on the information you received from the first witness, did the abduction missing person status change to something else? Correct. What was that change? Possible uh, murder, kidnapping. Now, at some point in time, do you make contact with a Ford Motor Company? Yes, ma'am. What was the purpose of that? 
in attempt to locate the vehicle. Uh, and what type of vehicle were you looking for? Uh, for the, if I recall this correctly, the year uh, 2023 or 2022, uh, Lincoln Nautilus. If, if you would like, I can refer back to the report, the exact year. Like, referring back to your report helps us the year of that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 2020. 2020, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Um, was Ford Motor Company able to provide you any sort of information? At that time, they were unable to. Okay. Um, at what point in time did you receive information about the junior? Yes, ma'am. What information did you receive about Mr. Come again? What information did you receive about Mr. Uh, the mother of the victim informed me that. Did you actually know actually what the mother found? That was going to be hearsay because they were too jealousy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just going to ask you a slightly different Um, you received information about Mr. Yes, ma'am. What did you do with the information received from Mr. I did further investigation on, on the name. I did not have a full name at that time, only had a partial Facebook name. And I continued doing more information. Okay. Did you also see uh, Dr. Samir Miller, correct? Yes. All right. When you got to Jameer Miller, um, did you identify where he lived? Yes, ma'am. Where was that? Uh, was it looking, do you remember? Well, uh, I believe 1280 Helen, but then again, I could be wrong. I would like to refer to the report if I got it wrong. With looking at your report, what we're about your recollection is that you asked Yes, ma'am. It is 1280, Helen. And what did they read? Uh, Inkster. And you have previously said that you were going to that location? Yes, ma'am. Now, Thank you. Good uh, morning. Tonight. P9. Good morning, man. P9. We've been saying it wrong. I've been calling you a tender. I, That's man. all right. So, uh, on the back of this day, you guys have body worn camera? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When you interviewed people, you had your body worn camera on. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And you took notes as, as well. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. You retained those notes. Yes, ma'am. Do you still have those? As of today, I could probably have some of that information in my notepad, but the notes were transferred into a report, a three page report. Okay, if you still have your notes, I'm going to ask you to provide a copy of the process. I Thanks, will, sir. I will look at my notepad and I will get that. To you. Okay, now, uh, when you were interviewing people, you asked a question and they gave you an answer, is that right? When you say people who were you interviewed? Witnesses? Yes, where have you interviewed that day? I uh, yes, ma'am. You interviewed Miss uh, Williams, right? 
Yes, ma'am. And you, the information that's contained in your report is the information that she gave you, is that right? That information she gave to my partner. Were you present when the information was given to your partner? Yes, ma'am. You heard it yourself. I was next to my partner when she was given that information. Okay, so you didn't make of anything else other than what she told you, is that right? I'm sorry, come again. You didn't make up anything other than what she told you. Is that right? What did she tell me? No, I'm asking the general question. You wouldn't make up anything other than what oh, she no, actually told you. Is that no, right? Correct. Okay. The same thing would be for Ms. Parkfield. Is that right? Correct. No further question. You No. Sir. You said that you were standing next to your partner. Your partner was writing, writing the information down? Yes, sir. Did you check the information that you wrote down to see if it was accurate with what you spoke to? The only information that you wrote down was her name. Uh, I heard the whole conversation of her stating that <coughs> she witnessed the male subject, everything that um, what she had witnessed. I, I heard given the description and I was right there the whole time. The only thing is that my partner got her name and gave me her name. So she was a witness. Okay, so you said that notes were taken and the report was made. So who wrote those notes and detailed the report? I did the report. So I will write brief notes on my notepad and then I will transfer all that information into my report. Any questions based on my question? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Please give your name and spelling to the end lady seated there. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you down? Thank you. Please have a seat with the spots next to me. Of course, a nice amount of speakers got microphones to the left. Thank you, Karen. Uh, would you close your name, please? Lauren Hibble. Uh, and Ms. Hibble, uh, what's your current application? I'm a graduate discussion. Not for who? For the Detroit Police Department. What is your current application? We uh, respond to crime scenes and was seen through limits. How long have you been for the uh, About a year and eight months. And <laughs> did you think they were training with the Yes. What were that? Correct. We attended a um, evidence technician course at the school for college. It's about 80 hours. Now, um, I want to direct your attention back to uh, May 13th of 2023. Um, did you uh, have a partner who was working with that Yes. Okay, and who was that? It's a French technician, Darren Tran. And did you, in front of the technician, Darren Tran, uh, go to a number of locations, uh, both in Detroit and in Houston? Yes. Uh, what was the addressable location in Houston? 1280. And 
while you were at 12 and 8 in LA, um, what uh, part of the home on the 13th of May did you uh, investigate or collect evidence? I uh, collected evidence from the living room and the second floor bedroom. Um, now, what type of home is uh, the house at 12 and 8? Um, and how many uh, bedrooms were upstairs? One bed. Um, and that bedroom upstairs, uh, when you went into that upstairs, okay, tell us what your observations about that bedroom. The bedroom appeared to have been searched. Um, I believe that search warrant was executed prior to our arrival. Um, and um, then you uh, went. Uh, to the bedroom upstairs, did you collect any evidence in the bedroom upstairs? Yes. Can you tell us what you collected? Um, on the 13th, we collected uh, the driver's license for Jameer Miller, the social security card for uh, Jeremiah Miller, as well as a uh, prescription for Lyle for Patrice Wilson. Um, and of mail for um, Miller Jameer at the address of Phil Lady Hallowed. A parole ID card for Jameer Miller, as well as um, a uh, reflex site box that contained a line around the music of virus. We were also there on the 14th. Okay, uh, that was what I was going to ask. So on the uh, 14th, you went back to the house, correct? Correct. Um, and when you went back to the house, uh, what did you search then? Uh, we searched the second floor bedroom and um, again, as well as the back floor. Okay. When you searched the second floor bedroom on the 14th of May, what did you think you observed? Um, we observed that there was a clothing that uh, see the previous day that was now the devil. Now, um, what time did you go back to the house on the 14th? On the 14th, we arrived at 2035. So yeah. Now, what was Okay, and when you uh, looked at five through thirteen, what are those? These are pictures of the uh, scene at home. Okay. And this is from the 14th. Uh, yes. And if you take your three of the anime, um, the CF Helen of the 14th of May. Yes. And looks at it to a side through the 13th. Not the actual part, ma'am, part of the film. All right. Um, Ms. Kimball, can you tell us what people did at five show us? This is the five which shows the uh, second floor bedroom and that was the stairwells. What people did at the next show? This is showing the dresser that was in the middle of the living room with the uh, jacket on top of it. Um, people did it seven, what was that? Seven, it's showing the jacket as well as a set of mail. This is showing the new balance jacket. Um, and that was upstairs in that bedroom? Correct. Okay. Now, people who did it number nine, what does that show? That's uh, showing another jacket. When you look at people who did it 10 or crap, <coughs> this is the jacket uh, showing the jacket. 
Um, and uh, that's a, a black jack, right? Yes, a black, a black female. Now, uh, yes, okay, he looks good at Latin, that's his actual. Um, this is showing us um, gas with the suspected fluid, and he was exhibit, or sorry, a jack. Uh, he goes to the oh, okay. This is a fancy This is a, uh, it's a white shirt and also has a suit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you were down the 14th, uh, did you do anything outside or was it just like you didn't look outside on? Uh, we did some outside on the 14th. 14th as well. Okay, and so on the 14th, did you find anything outside collected in the Yes. What did you find outside? Outside, we found a um, black bag with assorted personal items with suspected blood. Where was that black bag? Um, it was in the backyard in a, in a trailer that was at the uh, west end of the back. Okay, I'll check that. Mm -hmm. What people propose the 14 to 20? What are those? Uh, these are photographs from the 14th of the backyard and the end of the And do those pictures fairly accurate to take the scene and um, I know that the scene is you for. Yes.
No. Please raise your right hand, sir. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you out. Yes, sir. Thank you. So please have a seat in the spot next to me. Speaking to that microphone to your right. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Can you tell us your uh, name? Jake Patterson. And what's your occupation? I'm a police officer with the Detroit Police Vehicle or from the outside, I looked in the front and back seat. 
I was advised by another TSS member that I can't exactly recall who, but they advised me that they observed a body. What did you do when you heard that information? I illuminated my flashlight into the trunk and observed a hand protruding from underneath miscellaneous items. Now, when you say the trunk, and this is only getting out of there, right? Correct. Okay, so it's a smaller SUV, right? Correct. So you say the trunk, what part of the car are you taking? The very back. The very back, okay. Um, and when you saw the hand protruding, what did you do? I notified supervision. Okay, and anything else? I held the scene until Homicide Task Force made it. As well as evidence facts and medical examiners. Um, and at that point, uh, at what point did this car enter? Were you still there for that? Does it enter? What, at what point did somebody enter? As I was standing by, um, I believe after the investigators made the location, uh, I observed that the trunk was open and that there was a female in there lying motionless. I have no questions. Thank you, sir. You may start. Thank you. Oh, I do have one question. What day was it that you found this vehicle? May I bring my report? Yes. It was May 15th, 2023. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, not May. Your Honor, may I, may I ask a follow up question? Go ahead. Okay, um, Officer uh, Patterson, um, you testified earlier that you went to the location on May 13th, right? I believe it was 13th, yes. Okay, you just testified you found the car on May 15th. It, it was made a mistake, I misread it. It was May 13th. My apologies. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Trooper with the Michigan State Police assigned to the Homicide Task Force. Um, Detective Martinez um, wanted to direct your attention uh, to uh, May 17th of 2023. Did you uh, go to Helen Street to meet with your trooper? Yes, I did. Um, who were you working with then? Uh, I was working with other members of the task force, uh, members of the Detroit Police Department and Michigan State Police. Now, when you went to that location, did you meet with uh, the residents? Uh, yes, I did. Who was that? Uh, the resident was um, Mary Miller. And um, did you see Ms. Miller arrive that day? Yes, I did. What type of vehicle did you tell her arrive? It was a blue Mazda SUV. 
Did you uh, notate the license plate before that? Yes, I did. Okay. And what was the license plate of it? It was a Michigan license plate of 02925 R as in Robert, F as in Frank. Okay. Uh, this is the blue Mazda SUV with that same Michigan license plate. And did you take that picture uh, that I just handed you? Yes, I did. And you took that on the day that you went to the house. On that, that is correct. All right. Um, and to Amanda, you said that the license plate was the same. Now, uh, Detective Martinez, um, you were also involved in the investigation of this particular case, is that correct? Yes, I was. Uh, now, as part of the investigation in that case, you received uh, another photograph from Sergeant Ford, correct? That is correct. Any questions? Yes. Uh, Detective Martinez, you received another photograph from This is a photograph of a blue Mazda. SUV with a Michigan license plate. And this photo was provided to me by Sergeant Ford of the Detroit Police Department. Um, and what did you do with the Exhibit 26 when you received it from Sergeant Ford? Uh, I examined the vehicle and found it to be similar to the uh, blue Mazda SUV that I photographed at the previous search warrant. And uh, I ran the license plate. When you ran the license plate to the vehicle, what does it tell you? Uh, it confirmed that it was the same vehicle that I saw at the search warrant in Inkster on College Street. And did you eliminate other possible license plates? Yes, I did. Why did you do that? Well, the photograph that was provided by Sergeant Ford um, was slightly blurry, and I conducted a search um, in lean of the vehicle and on license plate readers to confirm that um, it in fact is the same vehicle to eliminate other possible vehicles that may be similar um, to be in fact sure that it was the same car. All right. And so people think that it's 26 is a very accurate copy of the picture that you got from our right? Yes, it is. Oh, I mean, it's an Yes. Dan yes.
raise my hand. You swear all time to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So don't be there. I did. Hey, sir. That's the good stuff. Thank you. Can you tell us your name, please? Paul Warren. What's your occupation? I'm a sergeant with the church. Uh, and how long have you been with the church? Uh, 27 years. Uh, and Sergeant Warren, uh, what are you doing for you? I am a sergeant over fatal squad. What's fatal squad? Fatal squad investigates all fatal crashes, critical crashes, um, operating while intoxicated cases, and assists. Homicide with vehicles uh, whenever needed. Now, uh, as a part of the sergeant of the Vehicle Squad, uh, you've received some specialized training in uh, automobiles, correct? Yes. Um, one of the technologies in automobiles is something that we have a little bit of a deck to inform the question, which is actually telling him what he knows as opposed to asking him how to ask the question. Three friends. Sergeant Warner, with regards to this particular case, what sort of um, evidence did you call the stand? I was asked to do a Verla uh, download. Tell us what Verla is. Verla is a software hardware where you, uh, where you connect to the vehicle and get data on the module, infotainment module, um, which Reports within your car, um, what the person has connected to the car, and for the outside world to the car. Um, and were you trained? I was. When were you trained? November of 2018. Um, and when you did that training, um, would you describe that? that it was a five-day course uh, where I was taught the software and hardware. I had practical um, applications to remove modules from the car, um, break the modules down, and uh, download the data from the entertainment center. Um, and did you receive any sort of certification in the training? Received a certificate of completion. Have you analyzed as you're in your job responsibilities other vehicles or vehicles to be as part of the program system? Yes. How many? As today, uh, 69 uh, acquisitions. And have you ever tested them? No. Now, you testified in the test before. In other vehicles, yes. Um, and how many times have you done like, over a dozen times between uh, 36 and 30 sir. Um, and what other fields have you been qualified for? Um, and it's actually, not a relevance to what other fields that he's only been to testify about growth, but our else has been qualified to testify and it's an expert, not relevant. System. Um, no, yeah, I actually qualified to start for an expert. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Berlin is a private corporation, correct? It is. And it has its own software, correct? Yes. And you come to some place to be trained for a period of five days, is that right? Yes. And then you're issued a certificate of completion. Yes. Is there some follow-up to the training from 2018? Uh, there's uh, seminars uh, online that I have uh, watched and I guess you could say attended. Um, and there's uh, out of state training that I have not attended that you're allowed to participate in. Um, choose to. Okay. So I want you to tell me about the number of seminars that you have actually participated in online. And, and is there a certification issue when you complete that? There were no certificates on that. It was uh, basically seminars, uh, uh, webinars. Uh, from the company giving new details to the uh, software and hardware. When? Uh, I can't give you those dates. Was it in the past year? Uh, there was uh, probably one in the last year, yes. They normally do them periodically. You think you've just done, how many do you think you've done? Of the webinars? 
would say four or five. And how long are they in the average? I believe they're right around a half hour to an hour. Half hour to an hour? Yes, depending on the subject. And you said so. Are there special is there specialization within the Burla technology? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. Is there some type of specialization within the Burla technology? Specialization? Yes. Matthew, is there are there subsets or is it just only one type of course and no additional courses? There's it's one course because it's their software and hardware and we're connecting to cars. So the updates would be if more cars came online where they are now available um, for us to download. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Are there you, you have to, you do have to have some type of continuing education as it relates to this particular software? Is that right? The hardware and software has not changed since I've taken the course. Uh, it's just we've added additional cars, I guess, to the list okay. that are acceptable. And the novelist is one of those. I'm sorry. Is the Nautilus one of those? The Nautilus was supported. Anything other than this, these webinars, because you've indicated you didn't attend any out of state I seminar. Did. That's correct. How many were available? Do you know? I don't. The ones that were out of state, were they more than a half hour to an hour? I would assume. I can't tell you the details of those. Okay. And you've done 69 acquisitions of, of using a Berlin technology? Yes. Do you use any other technology other than Berlin to make the same type of acquisition? No. No further questions. And I'm going to leave it in the court's discretion. Now, I have obviously looked up some information about Berlin, but not enough to uh, stipulate around um, an expert. Find that the opinions may testify as an expert in Berlin. Well, this is the first one that got started something. Right? Thank you. Um, Dr. Warner, um, in this particular case, you uh, received a search warrant to do a road acquisition on that. Yes. When you got that search warrant, what did you do? I went to our evidence facility and entered the vehicle and removed the module. Uh, I entered the vehicle. Uh, I have to take trim pieces off and I removed, uh, I guess, just basically the radio. The module was located behind the radio. Um, what do you do with that module? I placed that on evidence. Have you placed that module on evidence when you do that? Uh, that's when I uh, begin the acquisition process. I uh, take the module apart. Uh, there's a motherboard inside that module, and I use the Burla hardware to connect to it. Uh, and your usual? Uh, my house. When you um, connect the Burla hardware to the uh, Nautilus's module, um, how does that provide you with information? Uh, using the software and the hardware, it uh, takes the acquisition from it, the data from it, and goes to my computer. Um, and does that essentially appear all this one download, or how does that appear on your computer? On my computer, it's uh, a workstation. It's a software that is within the Verbal uh, licensing, um, and I'm able to um, work with it. Yes. This is my writing on the disk for a Verla acquisition of the Lincoln. Uh, and when you did the Verla acquisition for the Lincoln, you basically consolidated down to the information contained on that system. Yes, this is uh, everything that was downloaded from the vehicle. And in addition to uh, the download from the vehicle, you took a series of
fills or fill maps from that body. Is that correct? Yeah. How would you describe what took? Oh, within the Verla software, I am uh, able to take screenshots of some data, meaning the maps. And you uh, look through uh, these uh, documents in front of you. What are those generally? Um, first page is a title of two locations, St. Antoine and Kingster. Um, the other photographs in 24A are the um, snapshots that I took from my cell um, And is that fair of all of the uh, paperwork you have Yes, this is uh, ones I previously looked at in the home. And those are all snapshots you have from her for Yes. All right. So when um, you uh, download this stuff, you then obviously use some snapshots and you try to analyze the data, correct? Right? Yes. Okay. So you went to May 13th, correct? Correct. Now, when you go to May 13th, what type of information does that Berlin download download give you? Um, it gives me the ability to see when um, doors are open, doors are closed, uh, engine starts, engine uh, shuts off. It gives me connected devices. It gives me track points. And if there's navigation uh, device, I mean, I can address the vehicle to show me that also. So let's start with um, the information regarding the vehicle that you Doors opening and doors closing. Um, on day 13 of 2023, did you notate any sort of uh, time uh, around uh, the time of this incident when the doors are opening and closing? I did in my report. Um, do you recall what those times were? Not exactly. Okay. So looking at your report, I'll cross your recollection as to those times. They were. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sergeant Warner, what time does the door open that week? It was a 7.39. Um, and when you say the door opens, does the Verla tell us which door opens? No, this is the door opens. Oh. Um, does it identify all of the doors opening or just the drivers? <laughs> it just tells me a door is open. Um, door open what other information about the doors that morning were you able to observe in the room? Um, again, not in order. Uh, I know the door opened, door closed. Um, the door again, I believe they actually told me uh, a buffer was applied at one point without looking at my report. Just looking at the court of perspective and recollection and those specific times. Yes. So um, the door opened at 7.39, then what time did it close? Uh, it also closed at 7.39 and so we said. Oh, um, and then uh, was there a buckle? Yeah. What time was that? That was uh, registered under the same time of 7.39 and 29. Um, and do you have any additional opening up shutting doors on the road? It's probably that, yes. Okay, what happened? Uh, you say following close, but um, after 729, after the buckle is done, another that door opened again. The buckle is done, the buckle is applied. Uh, what time does the uh, door open? Um, 739 and 47 seconds. 
Um, and then does it shut again? It does. Okay. Um, seven forty and six seconds. Is there any more opening in China? Now, um, in addition to doors opening and shutting, uh, the car uh, gives us uh, what else? Uh, when the engine had been turned on by cranking, um, shift, reverse, and drive. Okay. And did you notate those things? Before? I did. Okay. So, when does the engine turn on? The engine is cranked at 740 in 10 seconds, so the ignition isn't run at 740 in 16 seconds. Say it runs, does that mean it's going to drive or just run? Um, normally on our car, we have an accelerator, like, uh, still, um, accessory mode, and then we have a run mode. So that's when we are in the run mode. Okay. Um, now, do you require the run mode? Um, 740 and 16 seconds. Then what happens? Uh, the gear shift then pushes to the gear. So the gear shift is put into the first. What time is that? 740 and 12 seconds. And then what happens after that? The gear shift is uh, put into drive. At what time does it get put to? 740 and 19 seconds. Um, at that point, uh, are there any additional notations you made about the gear shift? Now, um, at uh, the seven forty, um, if you start um, taking snaps, uh, you have in front of you uh, with regards to where the building uh, is located. Yes, based off of a, a track that was identified in the uh, acquisition. Okay. And tell us briefly, what is a track? Um, track is track logs of the vehicle, um, giving locations uh, periodically um, to GPS locations. Uh, so looking at people's uh, report 24 um, and actually 24 part of uh, work. Starting with the first photograph in that series, what is, what is that? Uh, this is a uh, page that has two locations on it. Okay. And where are those two locations? State and one, two, and two. Why didn't you take this? Uh, it's just a way to get the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Starting with the, the first page of uh, the what, what What is this? And this is an overall uh, map of that track um, showing um, from general area of St. Antoine to the ending location. And may I publish this on the? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Sergeant Warren, uh, this is the first uh, page in your uh, packet, right? Yes. Okay. And tell us again, this is from the whole track. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now, 
So, um, so the next uh, page in your uh, document is uh, the track. Describe the next page. Uh, the next page is a uh, satellite view with the same track, uh, just a satellite uh, photo behind it. All right. Um, and if you go to the next page in your document, what is that? Uh, this is a satellite view with the track marks uh, leaving St. Antoine. I'm going to um, south on the map to I 75. So is this photo up on the screen and that one you're referring to? Yes. Okay. And you see these little blue dots, right? Yes. Tell us what those are. Those are our track points. Um, and then as you move on to the next photograph from SNAP, what does this show us? This one is also the same view of coming down St. Antoine's neck to and then as we move on this next photograph um, this is uh satellite like view of the track points uh leaving 75 at warren and then getting back onto the freeway and heading west on This is showing the track points uh, heading west on I-94, getting off its E-course exit, and then going north on East Road. This one here is coming from the uh, track points from Kingster northbound, heading west on Rome. And then it goes uh, down several streets. This is a overview of the same uh, going north on Easter to Colonial, and then it goes um, around the neighborhood. This is a close-up view of uh, the location that was on the prior one with the yellow dots. Um, on the yellow dot, or I'm sorry, orange dot, uh, is where a the location where a phone was connected to the car through Bluetooth. And as we're looking through the maps that we just looked at, what are some of the time frame of I would have to refer to my report for the actual time. Okay. 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 The, uh, track, uh, in Detroit, going to um, the entire track is from 740, 41 seconds to 8, 13, and 24 seconds. And does the track tell you exactly where that corner ends up? Uh, it gives me the last point on that track, which was at uh, uh, residence. Okay. 
tracks that I did was um, one I just testified to and then one heading back to Detroit and then one heading away from Detroit. Okay.
Uh, it's back to Helen and subsequently uh, Louise and it's back to Detroit. Yes. 
started at 1227.24 and the uh, end of the track was uh, 220 in five seconds p.m. And based on your um, observations of acquisition, does the Lincoln go anywhere else after it ends um, in this track? Yeah, on the right. Based on what I was looking at for this date, uh, that's where the vehicle was. Can you tell us the Tracks or location generally of where that vehicle ends. Thank you, Rick. I believe I noted Yes. Sir. It was uh, it turned in near a pavilion drive and uh, stopped on a uh, street called Fireside Court. Let's see. Uh, uh, Dr. Warner, this is uh, standard time that brothers are being reported in. Is that right? It's local time, Eastern time. So um, I have a question on if you have your report, page 58. Page 58. Yeah, page 58. Page 58. Well, no, 0067. That's the space down time. I'm sorry. Space. Uh, the engine one, you said that's 740 and 16 seconds. Is that right? Sorry, then what? Uh, uh, on ignition run? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, 740 and 16 seconds. And then the gear shift is 740 and 12. Yes. It's going backwards now. It's the, it's in reverse the gear. Doesn't mean the car's traveling in reverse. Okay, but the time it just kind of makes this time makes sense to me. That it ignition one time is seven forty and sixteen seconds, right? Yes. And then the gear shift to reverse is seven forty and twelve seconds. And that may be a typo on my myself. I'd have to look at the software. But the next year shift is to 740 and 19 seconds. Correct. Okay. So if you think that that's an error, it could be, yeah. can you get back with me to make to give you the correct information that is an error? Definitely will. Uh, are there other tracks that were not downloaded? Yes, this car had a lot of tracks prior to this event. Uh, no, on this day, I should say strike that. Let me ask you specifically on this. May 13th day, where there are other tracks that were not downloaded. Well, everything was downloaded and it's on the disk. Anything, this is what I uh, identified and made uh, snapshots of. Anything other than what you identified and made snapshots? Snapshots that is available, you just didn't put it in map form. Correct. Okay. A further question? <clears throat> no. Thank you, sir. You may step back. Thank you. Yeah. How many more witnesses do we have left? I've got four in the Let's come back at 1.30. Lunch is at 1.30. Is that okay, Yeah, I don't know that. I thought that some had uh, the, I do. Kind of the viewing is from oh. 2 to the period of time, so I'll be okay.
lunch until 1.30. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's going on now? I don't know, man. Yes, they was wrong. I'm out of here. Yes,
Good afternoon, sir. So I saw you've been with me all morning, but I have no way of knowing who you are because you have your name as Galaxy J2. Can you hear me, sir? What's your name, sir? What's your name? Recalling two three five seven one five five from the people of the state of Michigan versus Jameer Michael Miller. The <clears throat> mayor examination in progress and changes for the name. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Elizabeth Wright, on behalf of the people of 2794. Again, very good afternoon, uh, to you and your staff. Listen, we're Miller, Miller, my father, I'm just four ones tonight. Are we ready to proceed? Oh, yes, Your Honor. I'm going to talk about this Okay. Come on in, sir. Take your name and spell it to court reporter. We turn it to my hand. Swear our firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about the guy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, can you say your name for the record? Sergeant Stephen Ford. And, uh, Sergeant Ford, what's your current occupation? I'm a trade police. How long has it been since trade police? 29 years. Where are you currently assigned? I'm assigned. And what in time of site are you specially responsible for? I'm a video. Video Okay. Now, uh, you did uh, train in video correct? Yes, and how long have you been uh, a specialist in New York for video extraction? Well, yeah. um, 
in uh, the case we're here for, um, you went to the shrimp seed festival, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and did you obtain um, video from the shrimp seed festival? Yeah. Okay. Um, may I approach your honor? Okay. Steve proposed to do it 28. Sorry, of course. This is a copy. <clears throat> what is this a copy of? A copy of the car wash video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need you to walk. I was going to hand you a flash drive. I apologize. That's people who did it 27. What's that? Copy of car wash video. With the thumb drive. Thumb drive? Um, yes. And on the thumb drive, uh, what video was on that one? The car wash. Car wash was receiving. Oh, Steve, I'm sorry, Steve. All right, yeah. All right. So when you um, uh, you're responsible for getting the receiving video, did you um, check uh, video on that with the actual time versus the time scale? Yes. Okay. And was there any differential between those two times? No. All right. Um. And seven. A very accurate copy. Video from the tour Yes. Now, um, what people do with the 28? What people do with the 28? It's a car wash. Okay. Now, when you say the car wash video, uh, what car wash is this car? I'm not sure. The address, your pocket, the one. Would that help refresh your recollection? Yes. Instead of eight four five, four little. And that's correct. Right. Right. All right. Um, and is the video on people who did it twenty eight apparent accurate on the video? Yes. Now, will there a time stamp on that video? Yes. How uh, was it aligned with the uh, current time, or was there a time difference? It was a time difference. And what was the time difference? It was an hour and five minutes slow. All right. Um, you know, I understand that people's 27 to 28 for example. No, I can't. Um, starting for Nana, for people who did it for 29. What did that? This is a event file. Okay, and when you say event file, what exactly is that? Event file is just that, just a compilation video containing the actual event. Okay. Um, did you create this event file? Yes. Okay. And what data did you use to create the event file that we have here? Um, video from Detroit receiving and also with the car wash. Did you use any other information in that event? Yeah. What other information did you use? Info information from Verba, from the victim's car. Oh, and you receive that information from the right? Yeah. Now, if you go to the 29 and very accurate copy of the video you created uh, for this case, um, detailing the event. Yes. I do think that people can admit to you. Can you address Thank you. 
So can, can you tell me about how many videos you need to make a compilation? I want to make sure I have all of it. How many videos did you use to create a compilation? Oh, uh, video <coughs> for the compilation, we said DRA video. But for the DRA video, it's only one video that you use to create the oh, event several. video. There were several things from. Right, that's what I'm getting. Yes. But you have every individual camera download somewhere, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Do you need your directions? No. Thank you, sir. You may start. I need to call the text. Sorry about the shoot. The whole shoot is not the two Yes. Thanks. Patrick Lane. And what is your occupation? I'm a detective of the Detroit Police Department Homicide Task Force Unit. And are you the officer in charge? Yes. What does that mean? So, as an officer in charge, um, basically get a case assigned to you. They take it from start to finish, um, which involves uh, pre interviews, uh, collection of evidence, um, any kind of um, Investigation or research that needs to go on. Um, that's also directing my team to do the same thing. And in the end of uh, end of it, I prepare a investigative report to send to prosecutors to uh, determine whether or not charges are warranted. Uh, Detective Lane, uh, in this particular case, you um, you had a case. 
also are responsible for submitting evidence to the Commission to include the crime lab for enhancing the crime. Yes. And in particular cases, the items listed in those lists two and three as Yes. Um, and also, as a part of the case, were you able to look at phone calls from the Detroit Detention Center? Yes. How did you go about doing that? Uh, at the Detroit Detention Center, um, uh, inmates are not given an account. Uh, so since uh, I knew a few phone numbers that Mr. Miller uh, made contact, I searched for those phone numbers, including his mother, uh, Mary Miller's phone number. Um, and uh, the, phone, the phone numbers you searched for, uh, Yes. Um, and we're able to access a phone call from that phone to that phone to the Yes. I want to make, can I just ask a question? You said it's 313 Did I hear something? Uh, what is uh, some extraction report. And um, the extraction report uh, details the phone calls you pulled from the Detroit Detention Center, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, there is a call, there is a phone call to uh, that 313 number is up. Right. Yes. Uh, what time is that? Is that two thirty two PM? Uh, I think it's two thirty two. And it was on what day? It's June 14, 2023. June or May 14, 2023. All right. Um, and the people who did 30 uh, in the CD format include that phone call uh, that you discussed. Yes. I understand that it's a very accurate copy of the phone call. You retrieve from the BBC system, correct? Right? Yes. I think that my question is what type is the paper phone number to this is Philip? Next couple follow-up questions. Um what type of phone number is this Philip? Um and what type of phone number is this Philip? You indicated that you ran this Miller's phone, right? Yes. All right. So you had at least one phone for this Miller, correct? Yes. How many phone numbers did you recall? Did you have for this? One. Uh, this, this one is for phone. I think so. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. After you pulled the phone numbers that you thought would be associated with Mr. Miller, um, did you listen to the phone? Yes. Why did you listen to the phone calls? As I said, the um, UBC does not give account numbers for phone calls like the Lincoln County Jail does. Uh, so you have to search for like numbers, uh, listen to that call, like numbers being uh, phone numbers that you would think of the would call, uh, listen to the voice, determine whether or not uh, through the conversation that this is in fact the person that you're trying to listen to phone calls from, um, and then uh, just search for other calls that, uh, that may be using that same voice, same phone 
Um, did you do that here? Yes. Uh, so when you listen to this particular call, um, Patrick Fox and Mary Miller, uh, the four is fully sponsored. Yes. And where did you meet this? At her home. How many times did you meet this morning? I talked to her at least on two separate occasions. Right. And <clears throat> No. Now, based on the information that you had, you read your phone number and then listening to phone calls, including this phone call, that this was a phone call from Mr. Miller to Mary. Yes. I guess that I have a subject because from my best will be foundation, the witness is indicating that he's talking to Mr. Miller twice. He never spoke with Mr. Miller. He believes, not even certain, he believes this is a number of life. So my question still is what ties this particular number to Mr. Miller? Does he have a phone record from a phone company? That ties this number to Mr. Miller. Because that's why I don't, I don't know where this number is coming from. So I'm going to pick the last foundation. So you said that you believe this was a phone call from the defendant to the mother, Ms. Miller, all right? Right. The only thing I'm not clear on is that oftentimes uh, inmates will uh, have another person call for them on a third party line, so to speak. Um, I don't know if that was the case in this or if that person, if Mrs. Miller, was there with the person with this phone I recall hearing her voice and Mr. Miller's voice. Okay, so you listen to the content of the conversation? Yes. And based on what you heard in the content of the conversation, it, it appeared as though it was, or was there something about the content of that conversation the further that you believe this was the thing? Yes. Uh, the things he was referencing, um, she was telling him that the, uh, the police were here, they found something. Um, she referenced what it was, and it, they found he was reading the, um, the return or the tabulation from our search warrant to him. I think that's enough. This one side, and furthermore, I think the argument furthermore goes more to what we actually should this testimony as opposed to this. The objection is noted for the record. Thank you, God. I'll ask the public in this report. Thank you. Please state your name at the beep. Please hold. Please wait while your call is being connected. Please hold. Hello, this is a call from a detainee at the Detroit, Michigan Detention Center. To hear your payment option, press zero to refuse this call, hang up, or press one. To prevent calls from this facility, press nine. Hello, this is a call from a detainee at the Detroit, Michigan Detention Center. To hear your payment option, press 
zero. To refuse this call, hang up or press one. To pre Please note that your account and any transactions you complete with GTL or any of its affiliates are governed by the terms of use and the privacy statement posted at www.connectnetwork.com. The terms of use and the privacy statement are most recently revised on January 15, 2019. The rate for calls from this facility is 21 cents per minute plus taxes and surcharges. As an example, a 10 minute call would cost $2.10 plus taxes and surcharges. You will have up to 10 minutes of talk time. To pay for just this call for a fee of $3.00 plus the cost of the call, press 6. To establish, please hold. Please hold while we make billing arrangements with the party that you called. This process may take up to four minutes. Please have your payment card ready. Please hold. Your card will not be charged if the call is not connected. To accept these charges and process this transaction, press zero. Please hold. Please enter your credit card number now. Please hold. Please enter your four-digit expiration number now, followed by the pound sign. Please hold. Please enter the three-digit security. Please hold. Enter the five-digit billing zip code now. Please hold. Please hold while we process your credit card payment. Please hold. Your card was charged successfully. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Oh, they were outside in the yard. What you mean outside? Uh, huh? Hold on. Yeah. It's gone in the yard. Outside. Outside in the yard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can out in the yard where? All over the front yard, backyard, next door yard, the bushes. Yeah. I don't know what they're looking for. Did they find something? No. Did they go in the house? Yeah, they went in the house. And what happened in there? Nothing. They took out some shoes. What shoes? Uh, New Balance. When did you get there? Yeah, I was here and they called Steph and I had to go back. I had already right. been over there to let the dog out. I just got here from there. I just right. got here. Huh? Right. Where was you at before they came? I was here, over here. I had just left him out there. I went out there to let Wolf out. Pookie pulled up. I was talking. I asked him to stay in the yard because I got things doing what I had to do with Wolf. Left, stopped at Walgreens. When I came, I was almost here to Steph's house. And uh, Steph called, like, they finna come back. So I went back. And I just got here. So why are you in? What? It's like y'all didn't do nothing to ask y'all to do. We did. We did. I did. The house, they taking stuff, huh? Yeah, they took a pair of shoes. Yeah, they took a pair of shoes. Yeah, they took a pair of shoes. 
nothing, nothing else. Some bad, nothing. Some kind of curse, like a tote bag, a tote bag or something. What the other was it? Um, brown or I think it was brown. That's a, that's like a tote bag, like a hurt. Uh, I don't know. I was outside then. And when it was outside, I was inside. Huh? When it was outside, listen, I was inside the house. When, hold on. He was outside. What happened? I was inside. When they was out, when they was inside, I was outside. When they was outside, I was inside. Uh, right here, bro. Huh? What you say? And I got a new phone, but I don't know the phone number. Why you ain't I, I can't get it till tomorrow. I had to go through, uh, I had to go through, um, because Metro was closed. So I went to Metro and they was closed. Um, then I uh, was coming back and um, T-Mobile was open. So I stopped in there and they couldn't switch it because I couldn't tell the man at Metro when I got my phone. I don't know when I got that phone. Shit, I'm stressed out. I'm stressing, but my head hurt. I ain't ate. So, I got to do it tomorrow. I got to switch it. I'm switching it back tomorrow. What? <laughs> we did. You said what? You had him rushing you. Rush me to do this. He wasn't rushing you. We trying to get you. I see what you meant. I see what you meant. But that's not what we were doing. Finish saying what I meant. All the time, anytime you on my side, today you was all about what he was saying. I'm always on your side.
be trying to force something he don't even know. That was all his decision. I'm sorry to say the car was easy. So I was letting him dictate my mood. He just called uh, cry. Yeah, because y'all was letting Steph dictate my mood. Because she was scared. My, she only got scared because y'all called her. I didn't call her. They came over here and woke me up. I didn't know what was going on. All I'm saying is before I came up. You're right. I hear what you're saying. You needed to do some stuff before you came in there. I hear you. That, that's true. That's true. I'm not. I'm not I'm, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I ain't call, I call a little day. He didn't want to come out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mama, I, he probably will come over tomorrow, Tuesday. I'll probably go back home Tuesday. Where my lawyer at? Oh, I got a car back tomorrow. They won't give us no blanket, no jumpsuit, no nothing over here. It was free. Mm. You have one minute remaining. For using GTL. Thank you. Wow. So this call that you have that you, you recorded, you have no idea what the conversation is about. Is that right? Oh, I have my own information. Not from the conversation, you only hear words. You don't know what the context of the conversation is, though. Is that right? I guess I don't understand. You're asking me if I might put my opinion on the yeah. Not your opinion from the conversation itself. You don't know what the context was. Do you? You played it for a reason because but I'm assuming for some reason, so I'm asking him what was the purpose for getting this conversation? What I got from the conversation was is that when he's when his mother told him what all we were looking at and taking from the house, he seemed upset that he had, she had five hours to do something he wanted her to do, which to me meant that her you heard of that evidence was not. Okay, but you don't know that's your opinion, right? Correct. And so you don't hear anybody say get rid of anything, right? This say you had five hours to get rid of it. But you don't want to know what the it is. Is that right? Right. Okay. You, she said it, you took some shoes and a purse. Yes. And, and that's all that I heard that she said was taken. Is that right? Yes. And you, you hear anything else that was mentioned? Because you told the court that. I heard her say bag. A, 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 bag a tote bag or a purse or something to that effect. Yes. Okay. But you told the court that she was reading the return. Correct. Okay, but we didn't hear that in that conversation, did we? Those items were on the return. You said all the stuff that's on the return. Anything else on the return? I think there were a few more items, yes. Okay, so it wasn't the entire return, is that right? What's that? It wasn't the entire return. Not the entire return. Okay. Can you redirect? Thank you, sir. You may step down. Thank you. Thank uh, that is the certified station uh, for 07 
Not for them.
the defendant, but then again, goes in that Lincoln Nautilus, goes to the house of Easter. Um, from the furlough, we have that information. He proceeds to go to the house of Easter for a short period of time, leave the house, we see him very shortly thereafter at the car wash in Garden City, as we got on the video, um, also indicated by the furlough. When he goes to the car wash in Garden City, he is no longer wearing the same getup he was wearing at Detroit Receiving Hospital, but he uh, is identified as Ms. Kennedy uh, in the photo from car wash as being himself. We also have the DNA evidence in this case, which indicates that Mr. Miller's DNA is on steering We also have his DNA as well as Ms. Wilson's DNA on a coat that was located at the So the fact of the matter is that when you say DNA, you mean you can also be blood? Uh, yes, there was actually blood on the coat, um, and then the DNA swabs indicate the presence of DNA from both Mr. Miller and the uh, Again, all those clothes are found up in his bedroom. Uh, also, Ms. Miller's purse has come in the backyard. Obviously referenced in that last uh, bit of evidence I played for the court. That purse is it's of concern to the defendant that after he is in the Detroit Detention Center, which makes sense because it's Patrice's purse and he left it in the bank. So judge, I think that there's certainly sufficient probable cause to find over with regards to the charges in the information. Uh, certainly premeditated for a murder, felony murder based on the varsity of the motor vehicle or purse and contents of her purse. Armed robbery of her purse and her prescription medication, which is in the back part of his mother's house. Um, felon in possession, he's a felon, he can't have a gun. He had one that day and she was shot multiple times, six times, to be exact. Seven injuries from gunshots. Um, and then all the company felony felony firearm charges. Now, in this with respect to all of the uh, counts one, two, and three, and and four, uh, it doesn't that prosecutors are just provided sufficient evidence on the element of uh, intent to kill. The manual would be part of that. It's been a very long time since I've seen that case. This is a felony. At the preliminary exam stage, I would venture to say that the people that proved in this case, although they need to do so at a probable cause standpoint, they proved this case for all intents and purposes. In my opinion, by proving beyond a reasonable doubt, they connect all the dots, they have they established the defendant's relationship with Ms. Wilson. They established the vehicle that he was in. They established him lying in wait at the hospital, waiting for her to get off work. He ambushed her, got her in the car, mauled her, shot her, robbed her, took her car, took her car to his location in Eastern or his mom's home, drove it to Place where it was ultimately found, made a damning phone call to his mother, telling, scolding her and blaming everyone but himself for his actions. This court is satisfied that people have met their burden of probable cause as it relates to the charges contained in the complaint. The court finds those charges were committed in the city of Detroit. The court finds probable cause to believe this has been. And it will be rounded over to Lane County Third Circuit Court Criminal Division for proceedings. His arraignment on the information date and time is August 3rd, 2023, at 9 o'clock a.m. Then it will be remanded to the custody of Lane County Sheriff. Thank you.
I forgot to mention the DNA. I think so. I do have, even though we're off the record, I just want to get the discovery board to sign so I can get this uh, note from off the record. Nine. Nine. Okay, working on it. And the further of the lesson is necessary, I want to make sure I have it. Oh, Judge, let's go back on the record really fast. Okay, what's up? Um, the case is currently sequenced. I need to add more to one sequence. Okay. Sorry. Provide more. Simple as that. I think so. No. What's his name? 